hope that just like us, you've been able to pick a thing or two uh, on that very segment. And we hope that that also helps you uh, becoming healthier. Now, still talking about health. Every 8th of December, Nigeria commemorates the National Blood Donor Day. This day is set aside to shine the spotlight on those individuals who voluntarily donate blood to save Nigerian lives and even the lives of those who are Nigerians, those who are non Nigerians but resident in any, any part of Nigeria. But of course, as we, you know, uh, acknowledge the role of these individuals in saving lives, we must also uh, acknowledge the very, very important role being played by the National Blood Service Commission uh, for ensuring safe and uh, uh, safe uh, blood across our health facilities uh, in the nation. And then, of course, ahead of that uh, very commemoration, which is coming up on Friday, the 8th of December, we have invited official of the National Blood uh, Service Commission, and in no other person is better suited to talk about this than Dr. Uh, Olufemi Ayola, who is the Director, uh, Blood Service, National Blood Service Commission. Dr. Ayola, you're welcome to our studios. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to have you this morning. You know, Dr. James Komolafe, the segment we just finished, uh, always talks about how we should take certain steps to ensure that we stay healthier mentally, physically, and spiritually. But of course, there are situations where accidents happen. And when, you get to, when we get to the hospitals, uh, once doctors and nurses run their checks, immediately they say there is need for blood. Now, we want to ask, how, why did the commission, that is the National Blood Service Commission, come up with this day? 8th of December, strictly, specifically set aside as National Blood Donor Day. What do you do that day in relation to, uh, you know, the background that we, have, that we have given as per the role of those who voluntarily, you know, go to donate blood? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, National Blood Service Commission is, our mandate is to coordinate, regulate, and ensure that all residents of Nigeria have access to safe, quality blood and blood products. Mm. And when we are looking at safe and quality blood, we are not going to manufacture it in the laboratory. Okay. It has to be gotten from another person. Mm. So the people who are donating blood are people with good hearts that want good of order they are showing love so we need to appreciate them because it's not easy for somebody to dedicate his or her life to donation of blood so that we can save other persons mm. so this day 8th of december is set aside to appreciate these people mm. as it is being done globally that is what we call national uh, world um world um blood day okay uh, by WHO every June of uh, um, every June every June 14 of every year. Okay. So at the commission, we decided to domesticate this in Nigeria, and this is first in Africa, so that we can appreciate our donors for a good job they are doing in saving lives, mm. and also to increase sensitization, okay. community engagement to Nigerians of, for the need of people to donate blood, so that they can know the benefits to themselves and also to Nigerians. Mm. So what, what, what do you do that day? You invite uh, blood donors and you give them awards or what exactly are the activities that mark that uh, day of World National Blood Donor Day? Yeah, thank you. Um, even though uh, 8th of uh, December is on Friday, okay. but we have various activities that we have uh, slated. Okay. And we have already started since last week. Um, what we do majorly, like I said, is to prepare. If you look at this period, December mm. of December, yes. there is this attachment that um, people move from one place to another. To another. Accidents are usually happen. We have more emergencies, mm. so we do a lot of blood drives during this period. So we started with blood drives since last week. Mm. We have done a lot of. Uh, um, blood drives in order to have bloods in our banks in preparing for emergencies mm. and also 
we visited our stakeholders on the need for them to ensure mm -hmm. that there are safe blood across the country. Okay. So these are what have, we have been doing. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, part of the activities for this year is on Friday, mm -hmm. uh, 8th of uh, December, we are going to have start at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. We are having a LD road walk, okay. uh, which is going to take place at uh, from our office in Wuse to Abidjan mm -hmm. Crescent. Okay. I will walk down to the Federal Secretariat mm -hmm. where the uh, Honorable Minister of uh, Health. Health, the person of uh, Dr. Mohamed Ali Pati, mm -hmm. we have a ministerial press briefing talking to Nigerians about the need to, to be a donor, mm -hmm. to join in, in the crusade to saving lives. Okay. And the theme for this year program yes. is blood donation, the real act of humanity mm. donate blood and give smile mm. and you can see this team and slogan is very apt because if you donate blood and somebody that you need use it the person will, will, will be happy will be alive the mm. person will smile and the smile will transcend the person the family the friends and every other person will be happy mm. that a life is being saved mm. so um looking at abuja for example uh c can you say that the rate of people who come forward voluntarily to donate blood is encouraging. Let's take Abuja first of all. Yes, it is. I would say it is not bad. Uh, it's a, a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, where when we uh, a lot of Nigerians understand the needs to donate blood, mm -hmm. but we can still do more. Okay. So uh, we're we are progressing, and as awareness is increasing, people are responding. Mm -hmm. We are not where we are supposed to be, but okay. we are not static. Mm. It's a progressive work. So mm. I can say significantly, Nigerians are responding, and that is one of the reasons why we are here, mm. to let people know that we need to do, donate blood for mm. emergencies. Mm. Uh, and people, everybody can be involved in emergency at any point in time. So we need to prepare, and not just getting blood. We need to ensure that it's a safe blood. Yes. There are so, um, so many of safe blood mm. in, in, in country. Uh, that people don't know. So we need to discourage this. Uh, that's the part of the activities why we set up this day. Okay. Now that brings me to, because you just said that there are a lot of unsafe blood. Uh, the commission is, of course, saddled with responsibility of regulating uh, uh, blood facilities across the country. Yes. And we know that there are also private, privately run uh, blood uh, donation facilities. Yes. Uh, I, 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 what have been the success rates of the Commission's activities in ensuring that we do not have quack blood centers because that would be a very, that's very, a, a very dangerous thing to, 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 to condone. What has the Commission been doing in this regard to ensure that all blood facilities in the country uh, conform to the extant regulations? Yeah, uh, you should remember that this Commission came to being two years ago. Okay. Before that time, um, it used to be National Blood Transmission Services, yes, yes. which is sided with ensuring that blood are available to Nigeria's safe mm -hmm. blood. But since the enactment of the Act yes. two years ago, mm -hmm. the Commission has been working. We have been engaging all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. most importantly, to let them know that the blood that is going to be donated um, to save life must have a minimum screening mm -hmm. that, that the blood must go through. So what we are conversing is that a minimum of ELISA, it is what you should use, the, the, the stakeholder, especially the earth workers, okay. you should use to um, transfuse to somebody that needs blood, not just blood. Like rightly said, a lot of us save blood is around because mm. people don't know their state of health. Yes. They will just donate blood or people pay to... to uh, for they pay people to come and donate, donate blood, yes. blood and they just transit these are happening but since the commission came on board we have been we have uh, uh, we have done a lot of uh, um, stakeholder engagement mm. and we are still doing it it's continuous okay. and they were we are moving from one um, um, from one state to another we just came back from national uh, council of health about uh, in november where we engage with all the commissioners in the country mm. and all the um, permanent secretary okay. in the, all the federal all the ministry of health across the country uh, and also we engage them on this same crusade okay so we are not we are we are, we are progressive because uh, you know it involves a lot of uh, resources so the commission is trying its best and we are not resting 
Okay. Now, uh, uh, we've talked, you mentioned something about people pay uh, to, to, for, for people to come and donate blood. From the act establishing the commission, is it legal to sell blood in Nigeria? It is illegal. Mm -hmm. Very illegal. Okay. It is illegal. You don't have to sell blood. Blood is given to you by God freely, so we should also give freely to, mm. to oh. the people that need it. Mm. We are, you, you can appreciate someone, yes, and it doesn't have to be monetary value. Okay. The person that is even um, donating blood should be happy that you are donating the blood because you save life. You save life mm. and you also have a lot of benefit to yourself. Okay. For example, by a regular donor, it's an opportunity for you to know your own state of health. Mm. You know, because before you donate the blood, there are some preliminary check yes. we will do to ensure that your blood is it's actually safe. safe. Mm. So in doing this, you are also knowing your own your state own of health. If by, by adventure we are able to detect something you need a medical uh, um, um, intervention for, mm. you will know on time. And I want to tell you that any medical conditions that you detect on time, yeah. the treatment and outcome is always better. better. So people should feel free to donate blood. Mm. People between the age of 18 to 65, mm. you can donate blood, male and female. Yeah. Male donate every three, three months, while um, the female every four, four months. Mm. And it is safe. Anybody can donate. Mm. So we should be glad to be able to join this vanguard and be a donor. Mm. Like I said before, apart from checking your own health, yes. you have, a, as you donate, your weight is controlled. Your blood pressure is controlled. Mm. You have a fresh red cell that is coming from mm. your bone marrow to your bone body. And it's also saved you from some cancers. It mm. has been documented. Okay. Your infertility rate as a woman and as a man is also increased. Wait, so you know, that's when you donate blood. When you donate blood. So mm. your own state of health is, 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 is good. You become more healthy. Mm. Yeah. I think the interesting thing that you have said that is worth emphasizing here is that when you go for blood donation, of course, they do checks on yes. you. That's free check for you, yes, free exactly. medical check for exactly. you, uh, which gets, which allows you to get to know your state of health exactly. and what you need to do immediately. Exactly. And prevention, as they always say, is better, is than, better than cure. Than, yes. than, than cure. Yes. Uh, okay, are there side effects to blood donation? Uh, say, if I go to donate blood, is there, because of course we know that there are some cultural and even some religious uh, you know, factors that come into play when people, uh, you know, consider donating blood. Uh, how true uh, this, and uh, from medical point of view, is there a side effect to too much blood donation? Absolutely not. Mm. And that is the reason why it has been spaced, okay. naturally. Mm. The lifespan of a red blood cell in your body is about 120 days. Okay. Yeah, you can see, that is why a male donates every three, three months. Mm. It will have been replenished. Are you getting me? Yes. So, and uh, the, at the, the side effect people or the, um, or the means mm. people attached to blood donation are not true. Okay. You absolutely will not lose anything. And that is why one of the things we check if before you donate mm. is to know whether you are fit to donate. Okay. So, once you are accepted to donate, that means you are fit. And to during donate. the process of uh, uh, collecting your blood when yes. you are donating, we use the best, uh, the standard practice and make sure that the process is, um, there won't be any side effects. Okay. Uh, so, almost, almost nil that, mm. uh, um, so you are safe. There is nothing to worry about. Mm. So, and uh, there is something we call immovigilance. And that's the, you know, is try to see, observe the process of the time, from the time you walk in to donate mm. to the time the blood is being used. Mm. We see that the process is seamless and okay. there is no side effect. Okay. Now, let's go back to some of the, the legal framework uh, that guide the National Blood Service Commission. How does this framework contribute to regulation and coordination of blood service in Nigeria? Yeah, Th that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, the commission, like I said, we are, we are mandated to regulate, coordinate, and 
also insurance. So we are also service provider. Okay. Because if you want to provide service, yeah. you, must, you must show people the standard practice. Okay. So that's why we have some centers where we mm. make sure that we are turning out a good and safe blood. blood. Also. Mm. But at the same time, because the um, the, the earth is in concurrent list mm. of uh, uh, states and the federal. Exactly. Mm. So we need to work with other stakeholders, okay. private and public mm. in all the states. And that's where the process of regulation comes in. So before you can do a um, blood establishment or blood business in Nigeria, mm. you are supposed to, by law, okay. register with National blood Service, Service Commission. Commission. Oh. When you register, you ha we have you in our website, mm. and we are, we are using technology now to be able to regulate very well. So if I, even if you are in my village, mm. you can register you, and we'll be able to know the kind of blood that you are um, okay. uh, turning out. Oh. Because like I said before, there is a minimum standard you must use to screen the blood that is meant for blood transfusion. Blood transfusion. So this is what we are doing. Mm. And as part of the regulation also, we are also coordinating mm. with all our centers across the uh, the that is state and FCT, mm. even though right now we have 17, 17 centers, but we are uh, still establishing and engaging to ensure that we spread across all the other states. Okay, you did talk about that the commission just came on board two years ago yes. uh, through the NBSC Act 2021. Yes. Exactly. But before then, we used to have the National Health Act. Uh, of course, there are some fragmentations and there are exactly. some challenges. Of, yeah, yes. uh, so how is the Commission addressing these challenges? Yeah, well, the, well, that's the, 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 pro, the one of the products of uh, National Act Act mm. is the uh, National, um, Sav uh, National Blood Service, Service Commission, Commission. Okay. law. You know, specifically mm. uh, address the issue of tissue, uh, tissue transplant, okay. which blood is part of it. Mm. So the law is working concurrently. There is no antagonism in in in, in both law. Mm. It's still addressing the same issue. Okay. Yes. Now, just as strengthening our commission to mm. make sure to face this particular. Uh, uh, blood safety mm. to ensure that Nigerians, resident, everybody resident in Nigeria that require safe blood, they have access to it. Okay, so uh, what steps is the Commission taking to address the issue of uh, uh, infected bloods that are sourced, especially from, uh, from commercially sourced bloods? Uh, we know that there is a prevalence, like you've mentioned earlier in the past, when bloods are sourced commercially, uh, definitely the chances of those bloods uh, having infections are there. What steps is the commission taking at this stage? Because that has been the fear uh, for a lot of people. And of course, the commission is now better situated as a commission to regulate some of this. And what are some of the steps you take? Have you made arrests? <clears throat> yeah, the first thing, we, we, that's why we're promoting voluntary, non-paid okay. donation. Okay. We are conversing <clears throat> to every Nigerian mm. that donate voluntarily okay don't get paid <clears throat> because you yourself you might need the blood mm. and more so importantly when you are paying for, for when you are getting a patronizing pay pay, a pay donor mm. there is high it has been documented there is high risk for mm. you to get infection the pro, okay. because the process is not properly followed mm. so that's number one number two is that the process of regulation we are talking about mm. we are engaging with all the stakeholders in health okay especially the people that are handling blood that they should use they should not use anything less than elisa okay to screen the blood that is going to be used for blood transfusion oh. that is sort of something we call rapid test kits okay rapid test kits is for is for one of these uh, screening method yeah. to test whether you have infection like hiv mm. hepatitis b okay. hepatitis c and civilis but for blood because of the window period and some other factors those rtk cannot detect if those infections are in your body so the the, the the system or the method that can easily discuss to the mm. barest minimum is ELISA. Okay. And that's why the commission is going around and engaging everybody. Mm. And it has even been passed by the National Council of Health mm. since uh, about five or ten years ago that that is the minimum. Of course, we have low um, compliance, yeah. uh, do you understand? But now the commission, the commission came on board. Mm. We have engaged, we are still engaging with all the stakeholders, stakeholders so that this is um, mm. 
this is uh, abide with. And we are also using this opportunity to tell Nigerians, mm. if you have any family or any reason to take blood in Nigeria, you can ask your mm. healthcare provider that, oh, um, which blood are you get, get giving me? Okay. Where did you source it from? Okay. Which method? So, have, yes. You have, victim, uh, I mean, yeah, you have the right. right to question. Yes, to because have it's your life. Okay. It's your life. There are so many people that have gotten mm. HIV, hepatitis B, yes, and the true, true blood transfusion. Mm. So you have the right to ask. Okay. Yeah, let them know. Well, look, you know, uh, you know what is good for you. So you mm. can demand. You can ask. Mm. Yes. It's, so uh, the NBSC recently started using an upgraded blood screening technology. Uh, which is in conformity of the, with WHO standard. Can you elaborate more on this? Yeah, what we are using right now, like I said, we are using a, one of the best Elixir, mm. which is uh, Abbott, Architect 1000, okay. and we have also moved to acquire the new one of the newest uh, machine, which is called NAT. Okay. Uh, and that's what we are using at our center. Mm. And all we are doing is to, and the, the Nigerians should know, or healthcare providers should also know, everybody does not have to screen blood. Mm. Anybody in, in the business, and that's why we categorize, if you are doing blood business in Nigeria, we categorize mm. it to primary, secondary, and tertiary. Mm. You, you, can, you can bring people to donate. Okay through the process of voluntary mm. uh, donation. You are not paying them. Okay. Once you get that, if you don't have the minimum standard machine that we're talking about, send to the center mm. where they have that okay. for screening mm. so that you ensure that it is properly um, screened. screened. Yes. Mm. So then we have tertiary okay. where the blood transfusion can take place. Blood transfusion actually take place in both uh, secondary facility mm. and um, tertiary um, blood establishment. Oh. So we are doing all these, all these categorization is to make sure that people are abiding yes. to the yes. minimum okay. so that any blood, importantly for blood transfusion, okay. it is safe mm. and of quality. Okay, as we draw the curtains on this segment, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, people get national awards and national honors for doing far less things than donating blood. How do you think the federal government honoring blood donors with national honors, uh, how do you think this will help in encouraging more citizens to come forward to voluntarily donate safe blood? Thank you so much. This is one of the directions where we are going. Okay. And we're engaging with the Federal Ministry of Health and all the other government agencies, especially uh, the Merit Award mm. uh, on this, uh, for, for Nigerians to see that there is nothing in life more than to be your uh, brother's, uh, brother's keeper. keeper. Uh, one of the ways you can be is to be a blood donor, mm. makes yourself fit, and also ensure that people that need blood, they have access to, to it, blood. And we, to the blood. At every point in time, let there be blood in our banks that people can use. Okay. So by the time we engage the government, we are engaging the government, uh, national honor, already we have ambassadors mm. that people have recognized, uh, recognized that have uh, done so well mm. in promoting this uh, issue of blood. Okay. And I want to tell you that our Honorable Coordinate Minister of Health now, mm. Dr. Mohamed Ali Pati is very passionate mm. about the issue of blood. Okay. Since he came in, he has been engaging us and tasking us to mm. ensure that we are able to deliver. Mm. And national honor is one of the things we are, we, are, we are thinking about. All right. We hope that the federal government, of course, and the Merit uh, Award, uh, National Merit Award Committee uh, take this into cognizance because even from a layman's perspective, that is just the least that the federal government can do to show uh, voluntary blood donors that they truly matter and they are doing something for the country. And uh, Dr. Ayola, uh, this is where I have to say a very sincere thank you uh, to you for honoring our invitation to thank be you. here this morning. Thank you so uh, much. Of course, um, 8th of December every year yes. is the National Investment Plus segment. When we